what I want to talk to you about tonight um, is what makes Tepeyac different than the rest. So let me go through uh, different groups of patients that we commonly see at Tepeyac and um, just sort of an idea of how we go to each person in each group. So as I said, we always respect the fact that we are working with a child of God. And let me just kind of weave a story through a person's life. And so the uh, adolescence, as girls become women, we find that's a very uh, vulnerable portion of a woman's life. And we often will see girls maybe as they are going off to college. We often will give a pep talk in terms of respect your body. God has given it to you. He has placed it in your care and entrusted that with you. Many girls have period cramps or other problems gynecologically. We work them through that. We apply the proper medical standards, treatments, evaluations. And so that, in that way, we're very similar to the outside world. But what we do with that information is very different. Um, we see so many girls that they, no matter what's wrong with you, we got a fix for that. We'll just put you on birth control pills. And so we don't believe that way. We tease out, is there a deficiency? Is there something that's lacking in terms of their supplements or their diet? So maybe we just need to give them some progesterone support in cycles so that we can normalize their period and help them to transition to the next stage and then realize also that nothing is forever. The next um, stage in a woman's life where we often will see girls is as they are preparing for marriage. And this is a time of education. Many um, girls have worked with natural family planning. If they haven't, we talk about the, the benefits of it. We guide them in that direction. As they learn and they begin to chart, they begin to have questions, you know, really they're unlocking the secrets of their body. And Tepeyac is a place where miracles happen. And it is so joyous. It just is because the last thing we want to do is stop God from performing a miracle. And sadly enough, we as humans are very capable of doing that. We want to be open. And if he wants to make a miracle, let him. We have a big presence in the world of infertility in our office. Um, we do uh, springboards out of the NFP uh, observation. It goes past just observations when there needs for treatment, maybe fertility drugs, maybe surgery. We're not doing anything with IVF, anything that takes God's place. We simply want to highlight the fertility that a woman has and tweak it so that uh, the the desired result is obviously to have a family. We want to help in that process. Now we're up to pregnancy, and we have a very large OB population. Um, you know, we do standard of care. We do the routine testing. We have the happy OB appointments. It's just a joyful time, and I simply love sharing that joy with the OB patients. But some of them are sick. Some of them become sick. Pregnancy strains and stresses the, the human body. Some of the advice given to new, newlywed couples um, is it takes three to marry, a man, a woman, and God. And so when we treat patients, we have a doctor, a patient, and God is still key in that um, relationship. Uh, sometimes, though, in pregnancy, uh, there can be a, a poor prenatal diagnosis. Women in our um, perinatal hospice learned about a poor prenatal diagnosis 
partially the way through the pregnancy, many in the delivery room. Some uh, are, the suspicion is raised earlier with some of the new testing now. There is the cell-free DNA. There's the nuchal translucency sonogram. There are earlier and earlier attempts to identify babies that have major abnormalities. And the outside world looks for those things so early so that if a woman wants to have an abortion, having not told anyone, her family, her friends, she can discreetly, quietly go off and have an abortion. Our goal is to uh, find that information and realize that this patient is going to need support. Um, she's uh, going to need people praying for her. We need to do further testing to make sure that our suspicions are correct. And then we welcome them into a special portion of our practice, which is the perinatal hospice. Um, and we don't treat babies like garbage, which is the message the outside world has sent to them. We realize that, as Greg said, we pay parents want to be with their children, especially when they're sick. And parents want to parent. And so the overriding goal of the perinatal hospice is to move that parenting period from childhood into the care of a person in the womb. We are simply trying to give the best medical care to that couple that we can. And so that's the picture I try to paint.